Hey friends, it's Dimitri with Rubashka Streetwear. Today I want to talk about managing your inventory plus your release schedule. So this is basically a way that you need to structure your clothing brand or your streetwear brand so that you can go on from there and figure out how you want to construct your business. So we have three models. We have the scarcity model, the restock model, and the mixture model. That's just a name that I made up basically. These two, you probably have heard of them before. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is the scarcity model. This is basically a common business tactic that businesses use where they only make a limited amount of items and then this incentivizes the customer to want to purchase them. So that's the first thing that you wanna know is that you make a limited amount and this amount is obviously determined by how large your customer base is. You want to make it limited enough that it will sell out and people still want it, but you don't wanna make it so limited that you're not gonna be making enough profit and money off of it to uh, grow your business and keep it running. So you wanna find a happy medium So for instance, if you were a large company and you only made, you know, 100 t-shirts of this design, but you have an audience base of like 100,000 people, that's definitely not covering um, enough sales to have your brand operate well. If you had, let's say, 1,000 people in your customer base and you made 100 t-shirts, that is more like a realistic number that you're aiming for. So you kind of have to go off your metrics and figure out a good number for yourself. The scarcity model is good for starting your brand. Good for startups. The reason why I've mentioned this in previous videos is because you don't wanna have your inventory locked up and sitting around when you're starting your business because you need that money to be circulating so you can grow your business, buy more inventory and keep expanding. You don't want it to be sitting. Um, so it, it's good with inventory flow. And I would say, I would recommend that if you are starting out your brand and you, well, we're going to go on to these two models and you want to do this model or that model. I think definitely the first year of your brand, you should definitely start out with a scarcity model and make only a limited amount of your product and make sure that the customer knows that. You want to um, keep your promise to this. So if you are making a limited amount of uh, design or of a t-shirt or hoodie, something like that, make sure that you, you don't uh, break that promise with your customer because it makes their item more valuable, especially on the resale market. Uh, this is this is why there are resellers typically is because brands like Supreme, they make a limited drop every season. People buy them all up and then they resell them and Supreme never restocks any of their items. That's why they have such a crazy variety of items. They're always constantly making really cool new designs and whatnot. So that is what you want to do keep your promise it's a like i said it's basically a reseller hive resellers will get attracted to your brand and that will help build up buzz it um yeah it, it is a good way to build up buzz builds up buzz popularity basically So um, the other thing that well, I did already mention with inventory flow, but it's a good model to use um, to have cash flowing through your business. So that is definitely something that's uh, a pro about this. Cash flow positive. The only con I would say about the scarcity model is that you can have real like a really popular design let's say like you just make the best design but you only made like 100 or 200 of it 
and you have tons of people asking you to make more, but you are keeping your promise and you are locking in that brand integrity, you can't make any more of it. So that's the one drawback. Um, you basically, in a way, you can lose sales. Because you might, you might end up not making enough to fulfill that, that happy medium that you're trying to find. Now on the opposite end, let's say that you are making, you had a design, but you really did, like, you didn't sell out really fast enough where it uh, looks like it's a scare, some people want it. So now you have leftover inventory of that. So that's the, that's the trick. You have to find the happy medium between um, not losing sales or, you know, or losing sales, I guess what I, that's what I mean. So now we go on to the restock model. This one is uh, very popular. It's really popular because you ha can have a tremendous amount of sales. The reason why is because you might be making one or two designs that just sell like hotcakes and people just keep buying them like constantly. They keep asking it, you keep selling out. There's something called the Pareto principle and that basically means that 80% of your sales come from 20% of your products. This is like a phenomenon that is in economics, it's in your daily life. It covers a, a very large, uh, it covers a broad base of topics in your life. You can see it everywhere. For instance, uh, like 20% of criminals commit 80% of crime, stuff like that. Uh, if you're interested in that, go look, just go on Google and type in Pareto Principle. And I'm going to write that down. So 80% of your uh, of sales, excuse me, come from 20% of products. So this, obviously the Pareto principle would not work in the scarcity model because you're only making a limited amount of number. But let's say that you have a very popular design and you're printing like 1,000 of it and you just have an infinite number of it. You can just keep printing and printing it. Some people in the streetwear uh, community or people like resellers, they might not, well, obviously they're not gonna really like that as much because there's just gonna be more and more people wearing the shirt. But it is a good way to get your brand out and get brand recognition. You can obviously get brand recognition from the scarcity model because there are kind of be a lot of hypes surrounding it when it's really limited. But with the restock model, there's gonna be so many people wearing your clothes that it's gonna be inevitable that, you know, it's gonna keep growing and more and more people are gonna want it because people are attracted to stuff that's popular. People are obviously also attracted to stuff that's underground and hard to get. That's what makes it popular as well. It's That's why you, there's not really a right answer of which model that you want. It just depends on the way you wanna structure your business and how you wanna do it. That's what it really depends on. There's not one right way to do it. I would say that if you're using the restock model, there is a good chance that you will make more money. Um, more than the scarce model. Because like I said, you can just keep printing it however, however many your uh, customer demands. There is one important difference between the scarcity model and the restock model, and that is inventory management. So with the scarcity model, if you're only making a set amount, you do not have to set up as many systems as you do with the restock model. With the restock model, you have to make sure that you set up a, like a Kanban system. I've made videos about that which means that you are, it's triggering a signal for you to reorder with your suppliers. That way you're not having stuff um, 
sell out and then the customers are waiting months for you to get more inventory you get the, you get the inventory replenished on time so that the customer is able to buy stuff because what will happen inevitably is that you're going to have customers that really want that popular t-shirt or hoodie they're going to go to your website and it's going to be sold out now i've been <laughs> i've had a lot of people uh complain about that on my website but the reason why that happens on my website a lot is because I run a mixture model. I don't necessarily run a restock and a scarcity model. I kind of do both. Uh, a lot of businesses are also geared towards this one. And I find this one to be kind of more fun, I guess, a, a way to run your business. And I'll explain why. So this is obviously both the scarcity model plus restock so with this one you can there's some clever ways of going about it so I can have a design so one design but I can have limited releases of a style of it so what I mean by that is I'll give you an example let's say that I have let's say that I'm making a logo t-shirt I can make 100 of a black shirt and then I could cut it off and I can I will not make any more of that but I can go on and use the same design and I can make 100 of a red shirt then I could cut it off so what this does is that the customer they might not be able to get the black shirt but they want the design they want that logo shirt but they will be able to get the red shirt and I actually don't necessarily do this in my business with the logo stuff I think logo stuff you should make it not it doesn't really matter to make it limited you want to I would suggest making uh, your logo tees and logo hoodies those aren't really important to, to be scarce because you want your brand name to get out there and just just make however many you want of those I think with the scarcity model you want to use more of the you know complicated and cool designs that you want to keep uh, to a minimum and then like another example could be once that runs out, I can make 100 uh, logo hoodies in uh, black. And then I could cut that off. That is one way of doing this. Another way is that you can simply take another element of the scarcity model and you simply, let's do another example. You just do 100 uh, shirts of a specific design and then you cut it off and you don't make any more of that but then you have another t-shirt that you make tons of them and you completely restock this is what I do so I've had about I would say 75% of my items are scarce and then I have a 25% that I restock. And this actually is pretty close to the Pareto principle that naturally happens in life. I've just noticed that I tend to have designs that are like 75% of them I don't re-release and then 25% I do restock. But even, in, but even in my restock, I use the scarcity model. So I might only restock, I might restock a t-shirt, but I make it in a new color. So that means that the original, let's say I released 100 black t-shirts, those are gone and I'm not remaking those. But I will make the, re, I will uh, restock the design, but let's say I restock it in 100 gray t-shirts. So this is kind of a workaround that you can do. It keeps things fun. It also, um, you don't have to constantly be making new designs because designs can cost you time and money. That's something important to realize. Designs cost time plus money. So by doing a hybrid version, a mixture, you know, actually that kind of sounds better. Let's call it hybrid. By doing a hybrid model, you are able to get the best of both worlds from these two things. And 
in this hybrid model, you definitely uh, have to do an inventory management right here. So those are the three main methods of managing your inventory plus releases, or I call them drops. A lot of uh, streamer brands call them drops. So I wouldn't say there's a right or wrong way to do it. It really depends on what you want and how you want to structure your business. If you're starting out, I recommend doing the scarcity model and then shifting over into a restock model or a hybrid. But if, you, but if the scarcity model is working just super great for you, um, you can still do that. Another, one other thing with the scarcity model is that when you're finding the happy medium, you don't have to keep the same amount of stock that you're using um, your entire, like throughout your entire business career. You probably can, you probably should be incre increasing your, your stock levels as your brand is increasing, but do it in a way where it makes sense. So like I mentioned earlier, if you have, a, let's say you have a thousand customers in your customer base and you're releasing 100 limited t-shirts, but then your customer base grows to 100,000, I wouldn't recommend growing that limited release to 20,000 t-shirts. It'd be more realistic to, to grow that release to, let's say, 1,000 t-shirts. So you want to make sure that it's keeping in line with your customer base and you're not overstocking stuff so that your scarcity model is now turning more into like a restock model or something else. So that was one additional point. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Uh, leave me some comments down below if you have any questions and I will catch you guys later. Thanks.